Continuing our CA Hoop Summer School Series today, presented by Hercules Tires, and today we have the head coach of the Elon Phoenix, Mike Schrage. Coach, thank you for taking the time to join us. First, how are you doing, and, and those around you in your inner circle and family uh, during this uh, coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, my pleasure to join you. It's good to see you again, Bahavi. Uh, I'm getting used to these Zoom meetings and, and, and doing this virtually, but we're, we're healthy, and we're fortunate, and if, if you can say that, then, then you're really blessed in these times. So, yeah. Coach, what have been some of the challenges that you have faced uh, during this offseason with COVID-19? Uh, nothing different than I think everyone's experienced. Um, you know, obviously, first of all, are you healthy? Uh, are, are you making the right decisions? I, I think we have guys from all over the country. So they've all been in different locations as this has progressed for better, for worse, you know, different guidelines, different, you know, just, just continue to educate them as, you know, the sacrifice they got to make these days socially, the smart decisions they got to make always, but especially in these times, but, and, and just learning this kind of communication. I'm more of a guy who would like to have guys in front of you and, and be talking and, and, uh, you know, zoom in and teamworks and, you know, just, I've always been pretty technically driven but uh now more than ever and uh just just getting used to it like everybody has so absolutely and coach speaking of having your players in front of you uh what is the status on that right now or what are the future plans in regarding to possibly getting your team back together and some of the steps you guys are taking uh to try to get some type of normalcy or, or a new plan together as you get ready for the season yeah we we had our team here second summer session um, very limited here on campus. Um, we had them here for a few weeks, you know, very small groups, lifting, conditioning. It progressed finally towards the end, July 20th. We were allowed to work with them basketball wise. We didn't have them for very long then, but again, kept it very limited one-on-one -on -one small groups, meeting all guidelines here, state of North Carolina, um, taking it to another level, just trying to put their, their safety and well-being first, but, uh, made that step, you know, second summer session, July, and our plan is to have our guys back here, you know, fall semester. Um, and uh, there's no foolproof plan with this, but, um, you know, be, it'll be good at least to have the guys here and, and keep educating them how smart you have to be during these times for not just your personal health, but everybody else's health around you as well. So, Well, Coach, more on a brighter note in regards to COVID-19, if there is one, obviously, with the, the extended break, uh, what – you done on a brighter side like you know any type of new netflix series did you get into a favorite book or, or what on some of this off time of what when you look back of what were you able to do that maybe you weren't wouldn't have been able to do previously obviously a ton of family time i got now a 16 year old son who just turned a 12 year old daughter tons of time with them you know you invest so much in the young men your program and, and and campus so to have that opportunity to have even more extended time with them was a blessing a lot of time on the court with my son uh, he kind of filled the void with our guys not being around and my daughter's gotten into volleyball So we got net in the backyard a lot of volleyball time. I've never watched never really had done Netflix before but obviously had, had some extra time so I saw how that worked in April I watched uh, the show Ozark and All-American and I got through those shows quickly and after that I told my wife like I'm, I gotta get back to basketball so it, it, since then it's been a lot of you know zoom clinics and and just trying to prepare, you know, prepare and get better as a coach, um, you know, reading books and certainly just educate myself and everything that's going on. So, yeah, those are two uh, definitely great Netflix shows that you can easily get caught up in and hours just kind of go by. So, um, but yes, coach, uh, let's talk a little hoops now. Uh, you know, you're. Your team last year, especially in the tournament late in the year, uh, really ended on a on a positive note and, and was kind of a big headline in that in the CAA tournament. How much of that momentum from last year can you take as you get ready for this season? Yeah, obviously we we're fortunate to finish our season, unlike a lot of college basketball, you know, uh, teams and, and 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 have a conclusion and have closure. It seems like a long time ago, as, as everybody, I'm sure, feels. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the word growth. Like growth mindset is something we talk about all the time. And just, just keep having that growth mindset. Living and learning. Don't forget all the experiences we had in our year one together as a, as a new staff and, and, and team. Um, you know, not just when we turned things in February and we were playing better, but also November, December, January. Let's not forget those tough times. Um, 
a big word for us last year was process. You know, just to throw yourselves in a process, let's get better, not be so much about the results. And fortunately, the guys stayed together and, and kept growing and getting better. But big word for us this year is progress. You know, just like, let's make the next step individually, collectively, as a program. Let's grow even more consistent. Um, I think, you know, we're going to have more concrete goals this year than we did last year. And one, one for, for, for us, for sure, and I think for anyone in our conference is, you know, finishing that top six. Um, it's, it's hard enough to win three games in March. It's, it's really, really hard to win four. Our guys learned that um, on day three of the tournament this past year. So uh, finish as high as possible, of course, but if you can avoid, you know, having to play a fourth game come, come March or come conference tournament time, that's, that's a really big key. So. Coach, it kind of has to be a whirlwind for you really best, what, 12 to 18 months from, you know, being a first-year head coach, you know, new place, and then, you know, you go through your first season, and then you're trying to establish your culture and your base, and then the, the pandemic hits. Just talk about, you know, I'm sure there, there's many excuses you can use, but I'm sure you, you won't, how to kind of establish that culture with really kind of a short time span that you've been there and all these obstacles you've had to face. I feel fortunate. I feel I feel for the the brand new coaches in our conference. If if this had happened, and they've done, I'm sure, great jobs with it. Um, but if this had happened last spring, it would have been more difficult um, for us. We had five open scholarships when we arrived. Like, you know, recruiting, but even mo first and foremost, the relationships you want to build with your current players, uh, having to do that this way versus in person, I couldn't imagine. So. The fact that we have our legs under us, we built a foundation. It is what it is. Um, everyone's going through it, right? No one can, you know, no excuses is a, is a big uh, kind of standard that we have in our program anyways. And certainly in these times, if you're fortunate enough to be healthy and, uh, and doing well. And, um, and then again, I, I think, you know, I, can, I couldn't imagine being a first year coach. That's tougher. That's a tougher task. And those guys have been living it and I'm sure doing this as well as they can with it. But um, year two and the fact that, you know, we have a foundation place really benefited us. So, Speaking of that foundation and going into year two, how will your team look a little different this season than last season? And, and talk about some of the newcomers that maybe have stood out in some of those summer session workouts. Yeah, obviously we lost one of the best players in the conference to uh, Marcus Sheffield. And I, I think coaches know in their preparation, they, they valued him. I still think sometimes he was devalued in our conference. He's kind of a new guy and, um, not just scoring the ball. If you looked at scoring leaders, sure, he scored 18 plus a game, but his assists, his rebounds, his defense, everything. So he's a big loss. Um, we got a lot of our team coming back besides that. We do. And uh, we'll be more collective scoring the ball. I, I used We call him Chef. We used to call his number a lot in crunch time. You know, now it's going to be a little bit more uh, diverse in terms of our selection there. But um, we've talked a lot about growing defensively. That was part of our growth as a team last year is I think we'll have more personnel and, and more athleticism to really improve defensively. But you know, some of our new guys, again, we didn't get a, a ton of time with them on the court. So I'm anxious to you know, progress here in the fall and, and see that. But one guy we did have the whole year with that's new, um, Gerald Gillens Butler. He was a sit transfer from Butler this past year. And we kind of use this as a red shirt year for him. Um, he's now going to be a junior in our program and we're excited about him. Um, known him a long time, helped recruit him to Butler and versatility is really key in our program on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. And he's like a Swiss army knife. Uh, he can play the point guard and guard the five. So he's the one guy I mentioned for sure. Cause we did get the luxury of having him all year, kind of having him on scout team, doing the extra individuals with him. Uh, not playing, but uh, he's a guy I would highlight for sure and, and shouldn't be forgotten as, as you think of our team coming, you know, going forward. So. Wrapping up today with the head coach, Elon Phoenix, Mike Schrage, and, and coach, unfortunately, the other uh, kind of off-season headline right now has been uh, the social injustice in, in our country. What have you and your uh, team and your student athletes, the conversations you guys had in regards to the social injustice movement and Black Lives Matter? Just we're keeping it flowing, we're keeping it proactive. Um, they've heard from our staff prior to George Floyd's murder, you know, that, that our disappointment, the lack of progress in our country. Um, so I don't think it was a brand new topic at all. Um, but what happened is when in June, we planned our first kind of team Zooms with our new team. 
I went into that. I was prepared to talk about maybe some basketball, but core values and and uh, but but we kind of scrapped that and, and we, we made that whole month about talking about these issues, whether it be just our team, whether it be guest speakers. And it starts with when you're a team, you have the luxury of bringing in, especially us. We have guys from all over the country from different backgrounds, different experiences, certainly different races and um, coming together, being in this circle, being tight, being about what's right, being the example. And now we've talked about how do we impact change outside of our circle. It's such an important time for that. So. Um, they know it's 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 flowing. It's not stopping. Um, we, we didn't just use June for that. It, you know, we continually talk about what's going on in the world and and how we can how we can impact it in our own way. So, absolutely. Well, that's great, Coach. Thank you for sharing that with us again. And and with that being said, uh, enjoy what's left of the summer. Uh, stay safe and healthy for you, your family, and your team. And and thank you for joining us today. And hopefully, we'll see the Phoenix out on the court uh, fairly soon. Hope so, too. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate your time. It's great seeing you again. Great seeing you, Coach. Yeah. Thank you.